is Samsung ripping us off on the S23 Ultra. $1,199 phone. Well, you'd probably be surprised to find out that it costs less than $500 to make this phone. $1,199, less than $500 to make it. In fact, it was something that was apparently revealed over the last day through some investiga investigation, not my investigation, but it cost $469. $469 to make this phone. Now, let's do some simple math real quick. Simple math I need a calculator for. So if it costs $469, divide that by $1199, 39%. It costs 39% of what they sell it for to make the phone. That means that they're charging a 61%. There's 61% profit margin. However, there's not exactly a 61% profit margin. And I want to talk about this because there's not just the actual cost of the phone. There's marketing, there's research and development, there's shipping and distribution costs, there's marketing costs, like intermarket costs for like networks and things like that. Just for instance, if you want to get a phone carrier certified on AT&T or T-Mobile, it's like a million, two million dollars. Like a few years ago, it was like, it was a million, two million dollars a few years ago. It's probably four or five million dollars now. Now, if you take a look at each individual market that you got to get a phone carrier certified on, you got to pass through the FCC, you have to do all sorts of different things. Yes. Uh, there's a lot of costs that go into this. And of course, marketing as well. Marketing and advertising is usually a very expensive part of what goes into the actual cost of a phone. So before we get too upset about the fact that we paid $1,199, or if you're a lucky individual who got it for $974 whenever I shared it about two weeks ago when they had a sale, well, you're probably happier, maybe less enraged. I, I, I think that there's still a merit to this, of course, you being $1,199, it's expensive. It's a lot of money, especially when you go, okay, how do we, what's the roadmap to get from 469 to 1199? And that's an important thing. So let's say research and development, ongoing support costs, uh, shipping distribution, warehouses, putting it into different markets, IP certifications. Yeah, you got to pay a lot of money to get this IP certified just so they can have the IP68 certification that goes along with it. So it's not all. It's not all numbers, right? It's not all just boil us down to, okay, they're selling it. They, it costs them $469. they are ripping us off to the tune of like 700 and something bucks. That's not how it works out. Now, when we look around the market at other phones, I mean, it's kind of a similar thing. If you look at the iPhone 14 Pro Max, it actually costs just over $500 to make one. So they sell this for $1099. That means they actually have a, left, a lower profit margin than Samsung on this, which is interesting because everybody likes to hate on Apple so much. I mean, me included. They're not my friend. But when it comes to this phone, it's actually cheaper than it was two years ago, surprisingly, or maybe not. Because when you take a look at how things go year over year, they get cheaper, especially whenever you consider the fact that this phone, I mean, let's be honest here, it looks almost exactly like the S22 Ultra. All they did was just kind of flatten the sides on it and change the colors. There's not a whole lot of difference here other than what's underneath the underneath it with the hardware, like the Snapdragon 8 Generation 2, the new 200 megapixel camera. But if I remember, I was looking at it earlier, it was like 529 bucks or something like that to make the S21 Ultra. And I'm not sure about the S22 Ultra. I couldn't get hard numbers on that. But anyway, it's actually gotten about 60 bucks cheaper than it was two years ago. Well, the cost of electronics goes down. It's something that happens. It's a simple principle. Over time, it gets easier and cheaper to make stuff. And that's just one of those things. They get better and better. They get cheaper and cheaper. That's why when we go back in time and look at like the $3,000 computers and the $5,000 TVs we bought that are $400 now, things change over the long haul. So Samsung actually does another thing. It's called like economy of scale. They make a lot of stuff for a lot of people, especially when it comes to the display department. It comes to the hardware department. It comes to like memory, especially. They're selling memory and chips to all sorts of folks. So they pass a lot of costs off. They use the same research and development budget, I'm sure, to make something. And then they sell other products and use similar technology or manufacturing processes. It helps lower the cost. And Apple... They're one of the biggest buyers in the world of Samsung panels. Samsung puts screens in so many different phones that are out there that it helps offset costs for them. And it's basically the same screen as last year. I mean, all they did was just up the brightness just a little bit. Actually, they didn't even. The S22 Ultra was $1,750. S23 Ultra $1,750. They upped it on the S23 and the S23 Plus. So effectively, it's like the same screen. It's like the same screen. It's like the same chassis. 
there's not a whole lot that they actually spent on changing this other than just, okay, let's put a new chip in it, a new camera. We'll call it good. I mean, we've seen it. I did comparison videos four months ago whenever this phone first came out. It's not like it was a big shocking revelation when we saw it and go, oh my gosh, this is the most amazing, groundbreaking looking phone in the history of mankind. But I will say, I still think it's the best phone Samsung's ever made. I love this phone. They've done a great job with it. 5,000 milliamp battery. Big 200 megapixel camera. Lots of work's gone into that. It's gotten better since it's come out. We have this beautiful 6.8 inch two-time AMOLED display. I I'm sorry. I think this is still, from a just average consumer perspective, the best screen that you can get in a phone. I think Samsung makes the best displays. And it's funny because someone's like, oh, my iPhone looks better. I'm like, well, that's still a Samsung display. So <laughs> Samsung, I think, unarguably makes the best screens that are out there. But when you take a look at it, when you see numbers like that, it can be kind of shocking when you're like, hold the front door. Let me go talk to that salesman because he just sold me an $1199 phone. It cost Samsung $469 to make. We need to have a conversation. Well, yeah, there's the the cost of business. I mean, it costs a lot of money. They got they got a big headquarters, they got to maintain a lot of employees, a global presence. I mean, you can take a look around the world, Samsung has phones everywhere. And that's not because they're doing it on the cheap. Samsung spends a ton of money, especially on advertising. And I, I remember I was back in Barcelona for Mobile World Congress back at the end of February, early March, and they the phone had just come out a few weeks prior, and they had a giant advertisement hanging on a crane, basically in front of the La Sagrada Familia chapel they have there. Big historic architecture, cathedral, all that stuff, with a big sign showing off the phone. It was either on a crane or hanging off it, I can't remember, but I was like, that's really disrespectful. But I guess people are going to see it. I mean, it's like one of the number one attractions here in Barcelona. So Samsung does spend a ton of money advertising their phones. I think, and also put them on carrier shelves too. That's one of the people look at the Sony and they go, why can't I get this in a store? Well, one, they don't sell very well, but two, it costs a lot of money to get these things carrier certified and put on their shelves. Samsung pays all those costs. So not trying to defend them. I, I, there's definitely wiggle room. I mean, just the fact that they went from $1,199, the phone's been out less than four months, whenever I made this video two weeks ago, they had it on sale for $974. That right there tells you that the phone doesn't cost them $1,199 to make. And of course, that profit margin, that wiggle room, gives them the gives them a little bit more wiggle room to try and do these sales, to try and get people to buy them, adopt them later, and things like that. And also long-term support. You have to think about it. This phone has supported four years of operating system updates, five years of security patches. This is going to be around and supported until the S28. That's a long time. Do you think that they're just making more money off these and people aren't buying them two, three, four, five years later? No, they're not. So there's like a long-term cost that's associated with this as well. So it's flashy. It looks kind of triggering going, okay, 469 for 1199 phone. Now, yes, it is a little frustrating. But when you take a look at it, take a look at all the other additional costs and things and all the stuff that goes into it. Plus, I mean, they got to make money. So they can make new phones, research and development, making new phones, new products, new hardware, all that. So, yeah, I mean, it's probably fair-ish. I mean, we know that they're charging us a little bit more, just like Apple does. I mean, all these phone manufacturers do it because, well, that's how they stay in business and they make tons of money. But, yeah, that's pretty much the, that's the fact of the matter, at least based off the information and the knowledge I have on how these things work and how much they charge for this. But, important question, is it worth it? I think it is especially if you can get it for 974. I don't know if it's still on sale. I'll have a link in the description for the best sale price that I've found recently, but yeah. Premium phones, they cost a lot of money. Oh, and also the fact that these are the only guys that have a flagship level phone with the S Pen with the significant level of integration. So, anyway, that's all I got. Just some food for thought. Wanted to discuss this this morning. Sound off in the comment section with your thoughts, what you think about it, and we'll go from there. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, please, of course, hit the like and the subscribe button, the little notification bell if you want updates when new videos come out, which is every single day. And if you're here regularly, you know that and hopefully you enjoy that because that's what we do here because we love us. To, I like to be able to talk about a lot of stuff and talking about videos like phone stuff every day lets me talk about lots of phones, lots of different topics, lots of different issues because that's what I care about and hopefully that's what you care about too. So thanks again. As always, I appreciate you being here. I appreciate your support. Thank you for taking the time out of day to watch this video. I know there's a million different things you could be doing. It's summer now. Who wants to watch an old balding guy on YouTube talk about phones, right? So thank you so much for all that you do. It enables me to do what I can do. Have a glorious weekend. I'll see you guys next time.